here's the thing. You guys have to have a goal in your photography. You have to know where you're going. So if you miss doing that, go back to my video last week, watch it. There's also a blog post that goes along with it. Set your goals for 2022. And I'm gonna tell you about some of mine in a minute. It's really important. But once you set a goal, then what happens? We don't want it to just be something tacked up on the refrigerator or stuffed away in a notebook. It needs to be going into action. It needs to be a live action statement, a live document that you use every single day. You wake up in the morning and you say, how am I going to accomplish this goal? What am I going to do today to move me forward? Now, there's an important step that falls between setting a goal and getting into action. And that's what we're going to cover today. Here we go. And I'm, we do have a blog post that uh, Jared will be posting uh, in the comments so that you guys can actually read this later on. Don't go to it now. It's just take you away from what we're doing, but it will give you basically the text of what I'm talking about right now. Okay, so you don't want your shiny goals to get lost by mid-January, which is right now. And most New Year's resolutions probably last, what, about three days? I'm going to be much nicer. I am going to exercise every day. I'm not going to eat this. I'm not going to do that. You know, how long, is, how long does that last? The reason those are so short-lived is because, again, you can't just operate on goals alone. You have to go into the next step to get those goals accomplished. And that next step has a very precise terminology for it. Sounds complicated. Sounds like a big deal. But here's what it is. It's called strategic planning. Write that down in your notebook. Strategic planning. So what is that? What is strategic planning? Okay, strategy, strategic uh, is defined in the Oxford Dictionary as relating to the identi identification of long-term or overall aims. That's your goals, long-term or overall aims, another way of saying a goal, and interests and the means of achieving them. That's the next part. How, do you, how are you gonna achieve them? Don't worry, I'm gonna give you examples. And it's also, this is a really good definition, carefully designed or planned to serve a particular purpose or advantage. It is also defined as an organization's or your own personal, doesn't have to just be an organization's, process of defining its strategy or direction. So we already talked about that. And making decisions, making decisions, where are those decisions made? Right here. On allocating its resources to pursue that strategy. What are your resources? What are your resources? Let's break this thing down. Let's unpack this thing. So first of all, you're going to set a goal. Now you're going to decide on how you're going to allocate your resources. What are your resources as a photographer? They are things like, well, your cameras, your equipment, but even more important than that is your vision, your, your know-how. That's a huge resource. It's the most important resource you have. It's more important that you understand what photography is all about and the art of photography than having endless supplies of equipment because that on its own, have you ever had a camera jump up and tell you how to shoot itself? Mark, just step over to the right a little bit. And I think that's gonna frame this a lot better. We, fortunately, we haven't arrived at that level of AI and maybe we never will and hopefully we won't because that, it's probably gonna happen. If you step three feet to the right, you'll be in the perfect geo site will line it up just like every other photographer who stood before you. Pretty boring. It's you with your knowledge, your, your best and biggest resource isn't your camera. It's what's behind the camera right here. That's why I've written these books. 
This is why I teach you the creative process. This is why I go over what I go over in advancing your photography. Yeah, you got to know your equipment and you've got to have equipment. But you, as a photographer, have to know what you're going to do with that equipment. That's your biggest resource. So here we go. It's defining a strategy, which we already said is the identification of long-term and overall aims and interests and a means of achieving them. That's your strategy. And allocating its resources to pursue this strategy. Your resources, your greatest resource is you. Another resource you have is time. Okay, now if you think I don't have time to do this every day, then you've got to go to my chapter eight, I believe it is, in this book, which completely debunks the fact you don't have enough time. It's a whole chapter devoted to finding time so you can invest it in your creative process. Time, like money, is something you can invest. And if you invest it well, you get more of it. You get back something. You have to consider time like that as an investment. So if you spend five hours, whatever, going out and photographing and two hours processing it, you've made an investment in your creativity. You have to find that. You have to strip it away from other things that are wasting your time. And I guarantee you, like all of us, you have time wasters in your, in your schedule. I don't need to embarrass you in front of everybody, but you've got time where you're wasting it on video games. You've got time where you're wasting it on social media. You've got time where you're wasting it on mindless TV. You know, I'm sorry. I know you do. I do. If I have it, you have it. Okay. So just steal that back and put it into your creative process. This is part of your strategy. Okay. Now, one of the things is, is getting down to your allocation of what you're going to do. So one of the things is determining to become smarter this year. Knowledge is power. What are you going to study? Knowledge just doesn't fall out of the sky. You got to study something, right? You have to look at my courses, for instance. There's a lot of knowledge packed in there. My, my course with Bob Holmes, my goodness, that's like two days with a National Geographic photographer. Where else are you going to get that kind of knowledge? Where else are you going to get the breakdown of, of between Bob and I? It's an, an overwhelming number of years. I'm not even going to tell you, but it's over 100 years of know-how. Where else are you going to get that? Maybe you've been doing photography for two years or 10 years. Well, we can 10 times that. And you're going to learn tricks and secrets and methodologies, strategies for coming away with how does a National Geographic photographer approach the assignment? Well, there's, just, there's an answer right in that course. You should do it. Okay, so let me give you some examples from other great photographers on their strategy. So here's, here's one from Annie Leibovitz in her book. Uh, and I'll put a, we'll put a, definitely put a link in the, in the blog post so you can actually get the book. So her book was called At Work. And she said, the first thing I did with my very first camera, this was her original strategy, was to climb Mount Fuji Climbing Mount Fuji is a lesson in determin determination and moderation. It would be fair to ask if I took moder the moderation part to heart, but it's certainly, well, moderation when you're climbing Mount Fuji, maybe not so much, but it certainly is a lesson in respecting your camera. <laughs> River, you're not part of this broadcast right now. If I was going to live with this thing, I was going to have to think about what that meant. There wasn't going to be, there weren't going to be any pictures without it. Respecting your camera means getting to know it. And as Bob Holmes said, know it so well that it doesn't get in the way of your photography. You do have to do that. And there is no shortcut for that. And that's why changing equipment all the time is not a good strategy. Here's a good strategy. Take the equipment that you have, the camera you have, and get to know what that camera sees. And if you've heard us talk about this before, 
It's Bob Holmes saying, you've got to know not what you see with your eyes. Our eyes have amazing latitude. We also have a huge breadth of vision. Your camera doesn't. Your camera only sees so much, you, but you have to know what that camera is seeing. And when you press the shutter, you have to know what you're going to capture. And that comes from shoot, take that memory card out, put it on your computer and compare what you saw when you press the shutter with what the camera sees. That's how you do that. And then eventually you do that enough times, you get to know what that camera sees. In the old days, we had to send it, or you know, if it was if it was color, we'd send it off to a lab. We've shot a whole roll of film. It came out underexposed or overexposed, and we're like, ah, I just blew thirty bucks on that little experiment. You don't have to do that now. It's easy. You take the card out, and you can see it. Okay, so that was an example from Annie Leibowitz. What is she saying? Essentially, learn to respect your camera. Get to know it like a close friend is what I say. And that's one of the chapters in my book. And it's one of the chapters in my course. I want you to know it like a close friend. I want it to be like part of your hand. Really, it should be that close. Please subscribe and enable the bell so you don't miss any of our new shows. Like the video and please share it and leave your comments. I love hearing from you. And remember to get out and capture your own images of life.